Hello everyone, this is Almir, Victor Echo 3, Delta Alpha Lima. In this video I'd like to share with you a little bit my experience on the FT8 uh, digital mode on uh, HF bands. Um, I am running on the FT891 and uh, to interface that with the uh, computer I decided to get this little guy here, uh, DigiRig. Uh, it's not the cheapest way to go, but um, I thought maybe uh, if it doesn't work, it's not a terrible loss. I'm going to show you um, the connections that I did on the back of the radio. Uh, when you get the uh, DigiRig, it comes with uh, two cables uh, for your uh, FT800 uh, series. Uh, one is uh, black and the other one is green and um, apparently uh, I watched uh, quite a few uh, YouTube videos uh, to uh, see how this thing works and uh, in my case for me um, I only use the audio cable which is the black one and the green cable you, uh, you just put it away you, you don't need that because you're going to use the USB uh, uh, B type cable for that. And uh, on the other end, uh, going to the computer, you need a USB uh, cable type C. Uh, and that's, uh, it, it, this days is very universal, the USB type C uh, cable going to the computer. So I'll show you the connections in the back of the radio. So the um, the black cable it goes f that's the audio uh, card cable and this is the USB Type B type of cable which is a little uh, different than your normal universal USB. Uh, you can find this this type of cable here. There are a lot of printers that you still use this type of cable, so you, you can use that. And also, I did uh, a little uh, choke and uh, going the uh, going to the into the computer, just to help, just in case you never know. And uh, so, I'm going to show you um, uh, the uh, what I have done in the uh, in the main menu of the FT891. And uh, I actually I uh, will leave the uh, down uh, on the description. Uh, in details what uh, kind what changes that I did on the uh, main menu and also on the soft menu uh, of the FT891. Go through the uh, how you install to uh, the software the WSJTX uh, how it works but I'll, I'll show you how what kind of setup that I did uh, uh, to get this thing working. So on the main menu of the FT891 there were uh, uh, 10 items that I changed on the menu, um, which is uh, 5-6, which is the uh, cut rate. Uh, for me, um, I'm running on 9600 BPS. Uh, some people, uh, they run at a different, different cut rates in here, but for me, I, that's the one that worked for me. And then uh, 5 uh, dash seven, so I change it to uh, 100 and then dash eight disable, and f this is it for the uh, five uh, menus. And then you jump to the eight, and then you go eight one is other, and then eight three it's 1500, eight five it's off. 8.7 it's off, 8.9 it's rare, and 8.10 is day, D -A -K -Y, K -Y, and 12 is USB. So, and, and also the power, which is way down on 16 something, the only thing that I changed here was the power, uh, 25 watts. I run about 20, 25 watts, even 30 watts. It, it doesn't make that much of a difference. 
So I'm running about uh, tw 25 watts, 35 there, uh, 25. So the uh, that's it for the, the main menu. That's the only thing that I change. And uh, on the uh, on the soft menu, which is this one, uh, basically what I did here, I change, I turn it off everything. So in here, all the filters, the uh, noise blanket and all that, you just turn it off everything. And you adjust the width of the, uh, the frequency in here. And the, you want the max, the max range, okay, which is 3200 in this radio. So normally, I think it would be somewhere in, in here. It comes with it by default, so you just change that to 30. 3200 and and everything else is off as you can see and the meter uh, you want to bring up the um, uh, let me see here the ALC meter okay so on the display bring out the ALC that's all that's all you do and everything else is off so that's how the uh, the FET 891 uh, set up uh, but I, then again, like I said, I'll leave the uh, description on uh, details uh, how how I did the changes and the values. So after I I set up the menu on the FT891, uh, I went down the online and then I downloaded the uh, the software WSJTX. Uh, I believe that this is the site that shows up on the the very top when you uh, Google, and uh, so. They have all kinds of the operating system, Windows, uh, Macintosh, uh, Linux, and basically all kinds of, uh, of uh, operating system. In my case, I downloaded the Mac version. Um, if you're running on the Mac version like I am, uh, it's a bit different than the, the Windows and I believe the Linux. Um, once you download, it comes with the folder and then you open the folder just make sure you read the file readme file and there is a sequence after you install in your computer before you open the software you have to go into the uh, terminal of your uh, Mac and then there is a command lines that you're gonna enter to make sure that you got all the files installed in your Mac Otherwise, it's not going to work. So it's a it's a it's a good thing to check if all the proper files were installed in your Mac um, in order to work properly. Okay, so I think that's uh, Windows. I'm not sure. I don't think it does that. Windows does uh, does that for you behind, so you don't see it. But in the Mac, you have to do that. So once you've done that, then you end up with the program. And so, in here you have the uh, the uh, band activity, and then the RX frequency and stuff like that. And this is the waterfall. Um, I'm running on a, on a laptop, micro laptop, which is only 15 inches uh, screen. So eventually I'll get a, a bigger screen, so it's it's much better to manage the uh, the views. And so once you install that. Um, you're going to preference and that's where you're going to do your uh, yours uh, changes first um, you have to put your call signs on the general tab uh, grid and then again by watching uh, quite a few uh, videos on YouTube I kind of follow some of the guys uh, they check all the this box is in here, not the first one, but the, from the second one all the way to the bottom. And then uh, the behavior uh, tab here, uh, double click on call sets, TX enable. So you double click on the call that you want to respond to CQ and it pops up, it populates for you. And then uh, the next tab, tab is uh, the radio. So you uh, select your uh, what kind of radio you have. And then now this is the part that I had uh, quite a bit. The, the, my most problems were in here, which is the 
once you have connected the uh, DG rig in your computer and the USB uh, B type of cable which is the CAT cable you have to find the proper port okay so on this side here on the left side here this is the CAT the CAT control so this is the B the USB B type cable you have to find which one it is in my case in, in this computer apparently um, each cable that I would connect uh, would show up a double would show up all the, like it's one cable but it shows two ports and then the other one the type uh, the, the sound card cable also it shows double everything is almost double it almost looks the same but it's not so you have to choose the proper one in my case then again it was the uh, as you can see here there's two types you see they're almost identical but the difference is the cu.slab and the tti.slab so in my case is the tti.slab okay so that was the confusion for me it took him a little while to get going at the one point i didn't think it was going to work but i said no this is just a a, a hardware connection and then on this side here the ptt method um, i choose the rts okay and then again you, this is the uh, the sound card so you have to find in my case then again as you can see there's two very similar here and then again is the tti type the, the the very last one here and mode i choose the usb and the split operations the fake it okay so that's that's the setting that i got working for me and then the uh, the audio um in my case it was uh i think it looks different in every computer but i'm not sure but i think the pnp it's almost it shows in ever in every computer so it's that's that's what it is that's the sound device in and out okay so you choose the ptt for in and out for both so basically that's it i mean and then the rest of it uh I didn't change it anything the colors uh, uh, of the, the, the CQ the what the, the preference of colors you want to show in here so I didn't change it anything I just left as a default so basically that's that's it and uh, that's how I got going you get uh, the uh, WSJTX uh, working and uh, the interface of the program uh, you learn how it goes like I did uh, one important thing is uh, the DB uh, here, so it has to be somewhere in between uh, 40 and 50 percent in here. So to adjust that, um, you can do that by uh, uh, bring up the, the squelch uh, button, the outside button of the uh, the radio. You can bring up, as you can see, it goes down, or you can bring up, but you don't want to go red or either orange so you want to uh keep on the green part okay so i leave it somewhere somewhere in here in the middle so that's important and uh the the, the rest of the stuff you will see how it goes and it basically does everything for you it populates the the messages uh in, in this part in here you can manipulate a little bit but at this point i just let it go uh, by default Another thing that I forgot to mention was once you're done with the FT8 and you want to go back to the SSB phone uh, mode, uh, the only thing that I changed was uh, putting back the filters on the soft menu. On the main menu, I haven't changed anything yet. I just left as, as it was. And one thing, I brought it up, up or down the power of the uh, the radio that's the only thing so there is the ft8 digital mode um, wonderful I never did so many DX in my life in a short period of time <laughs> and uh, one curious thing that happened with me was um, these days I am running uh, two Moxion's antenna in my backyard one for uh, 20 meters and one for 50 meters I am running uh, two quacks cable uh, the 
there is the, the 20 meters uh, Moxion and the 15 meters is the inside of the uh, 20 meters. So I'm running two coax cable. I think eventually I can run in the one coax cable, but at the moment I, to, to make it easier, I just run in two cables. And the first, uh, my first time when I got this uh, FT8 working, I had the uh, 20 meters uh, band uh, cable connected to the radio. So, and, and you also can change the band on the software. Uh, so I changed for the 15 meters, but I didn't realize that I, I didn't change the cable in the back of the radio for the uh, 15 meters uh, antenna. And uh, I made my first contact with a station in Netherlands, uh, believe it or not, with the uh, 20 meters band antenna, but only 15 meters band on the software. And it worked. So I was like, wow, what happened here? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, if you know what happened here, I know that the FT8 it detects very, very weak signals, but in this case it was a different antenna and, it's, and I still were able to make a contact with, with uh, another station, DX another station. So I found that this is amazing. I mean, what's going on here? But anyways, it's wonderful technology and um, I'm having a lot of fun with this. I, I'm not going to stay in front of the computer watching the monitor, you know, for a long time, that's for sure. I, I like to uh, contact people and talk to people, even though I'm not a big talker, but I think I like the older ways too, definitely. And, uh, but this technology is wonderful. And uh, so, yeah, so I, uh, I hope you, uh, you know, uh, uh, things works for you. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, leave it uh, down uh, below in the comments and, uh, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Uh, Victor Echo 3, Delta Alpha Lima, and uh, Beth 73. See you in the next one.